Hey everyone, so over the next 25 minutes, we're gonna be walking through a hands-on lab and that's gonna get us all a free quick start Kubernetes guide ebook for us to increase our knowledge around Kubernetes. So first of all, if we head on over to this URL and we fill in our details, our first name last night, last name, company name, phone number, email address, that's gonna prompt you into this page. This is then going to give a list out of the challenges, how long you need. Now I'm aiming that we could probably get it done together in 25, so let's ignore that 45 for now. And then what we're gonna run through is we're gonna add the Cast and Helm um, repository. We're gonna install MySQL and create a demo database. We're going to install K10 and configure the storage. We're going to view the K10 dashboard. We're going to create a backup policy. We're going to restore from backup and then we're going to confirm our email again for our free ebook. Okay, so this is going to take about a minute. So just bear with me or pause the video at this point. So first of all, we want to add that K10 or the Helm repository. So copy it to clipboard. I mean, if you really wanna write it out and type that command, then absolutely go ahead. I actually find that the muscle memory, especially with the kubectl commands, they, they help massively, especially when you're playing around with it on a daily basis. But when we get onto the database, you're probably gonna to wanna to be able to copy and paste. That's where I'll call out actually that we wanna be doing this in, in Chrome. Chrome seems to work best here. Um, Probably a bit late to, to mention that right now. Okay, so first of all, we've added that. Let's make sure that we've done that correctly. Okay, good stuff. Now we're going to walk to the next, the next step. Okay, so this is where we're gonna install MySQL and create a demo database. But it's also where I'm gonna give a, a bit of a, a, a trick, a community nod to, well, this is actually a, a real Kubernetes cluster, right? This is, it's not massive. It's not gonna stay around forever. So don't put your mission critical da uh, data up here, but it is actually a system that we can, that you can use. And like I mentioned around being in kubectl and, and actually understanding some of that, some of the, the logic around it is a, it's a good place to to really start getting getting to grips with some of that. So let's first start by installing MySQL with some of the following commands. So we're gonna create the namespace and then we're gonna install from Helm MySQL. So we can go and do a, a watch of that as well. So let's go and see what's going on so we can see that it's container creating and then once the once these are all ready or once this is ready then we've got to add some data to our to our database okay so we're good there so then what we want to do is just control c out of that we can for argument's sake clear this down and and just go back and what we've just done is take a copy of this my sql command and this is going to exec us into let's do it and then i'll walk through so it gets our, our secret from a kubectl get secret namespace MySQL that was installed as part of the Helm chart. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually connect into the container or into the pod, and we're going to create a database called K10 Demo. So there we go. And let's check whether we've done it correctly. Okay, big green ticks, that's always a good thing. Okay, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to create a namespace for Kasten, and we're going to then install that uh, from the Helm chart that we did at the very beginning. So let's start by creating the namespace and then let's install that Helm chart. Again, let's go and take a look. There's a few more pods that we need to wait to, to come up here.
So as we start to get everything into that running state, and you saw the catalog come up with an error, but there's no order of run here. It's a desired state and the deployment is just trying to get everything up and running. And there is no dependent, well, there are dependencies, but it will just try on all of them. So, okay, we're in a good spot there and we've got our, all of our pods up and running in our custom namespace. So if we come out of there and we then want to configure the local storage system for the ability to have a volume snapshot class. So if we actually go off piece here and we go uh, get volume snapshot class, you can see that we have a CSI host path snap class in play. And if we wanted to go and annotate that, we can do that by doing the following. Then we go and check. That's gonna go and make sure that we've deployed K10 and we've annotated as we just suggested. Okay, so next up is about being able to access our K10, our casting K10 dashboard. So we're gonna do that by creating or by changing our gateway port. So before we go into there, if we go look at get services, namespace, casting.io, and we look at them, everything is on a cluster IP. Nothing is on a node port, especially this um, gateway. So what we wanna do is we wanna go and take this command, copy that to clipboard, create that YAML file, qctl apply minus f k10 hyphen node port hyphen svc dot yaml so we've created a new gateway called gateway port and if we wanted to just quickly go and double check that we've now got a new service that we've just created called gateway node port um, we can go and confirm that Okay, so at this point, we can go back into the terminal or we can go into the dashboard. So let's just put in some info here that gets us in. And again, this is a real life looking at our environment. So you can see here that off the bat, we've found three applications. You can see that we have the default namespace, we have a local path to the storage and we have our newly created MySQL. Now, what it wants us to do is it wants us to create a policy to back up our MySQL namespace or our application to the previously configured ob object storage location. So from the main K10 dashboard, click on the policies card. There should be no policies visible at this point. Okay, so I've just jumped ahead. If we go back and we go into policies, you can see here we don't have anything. So let's jump into create new policy and to stop, to not be told off or not to get that check validated, let's actually call it what we um, what we're told to call it. So back up my SQL. We could give it some comments in there. We want to select snapshot as our as our um, action. Now this could be import. We can go over that on a, another K10 demo uh, if need be. Uh, we want to do it on an hourly basis. We want to leave the snapshot retention as is. Obviously here you could change this into more so than, than is configured there or less so. Um, select by name for select applications. So name. And then under here we can go MySQL. And then all of that is all, all good. So then let's go ahead and create that policy. And at this point, we've got that policy created. It's gonna run on the hour, every hour. 
it's going to retain this amount or this retention. We can go back in, we can edit that, we can see the raw um, or the API that we can then go and see later on within um, within the Kubernetes API. In fact, we might we might just do that shortly. Um, we can run once, which is what they want us to do here, and click on Run Once on the Policies page, confirm by clicking Run Policy, and then go back to the main dashboard. Okay, so we want to run that. Let's go back to the dashboard, and let's take a look in a few seconds. That policy should appear here. There we go, and let's just see what it's going to do. So it's going to go and snapshot the workload MySQL. It's going to grab all of the application configuration and then all of the components to that. So you can see here that under spec, we're going to get the namespace, the secrets that are associated, the config maps, the services, the persistent volume claims, the stateful data, the service accounts, the storage classes, the stateful sets, and another PVC there. If we then go and check around phases, so we can see that those three phases are complete, completed successfully. And just to show you what it looks like, if we go into here and we do a kubectl get policy under the namespace of caston.io, you can see that we've got our backup hyphen MySQL. And that correlates to that job or to the policy that we have created here, backup MySQL. But what that then allows us to do is use this in our in our continuous deployment. And that's something that I'm gonna be covering in, a, in another demo over the next couple of days. Okay, so hopefully we've run everything correctly there. So let's run a quick check. Okay, good stuff. And then we can move on to the next. So now we have a backup of our MySQL database and that newly created database that we've just created. Okay, so now something that a data management focused engineer probably wouldn't be doing is focusing on causing data loss apart from when we come to demos so what we want to do here is we want to jump back into our mysql terminal or exec into our, our our pod our mysql pod and let's verify that the database has actually been deleted with that that previous command so we drop the database K10 demo, and if we go like that now, you can see that we don't have any any demo. Uh, we don't have that K10 demo. Okay, so to recover MySQL, go to the K10 dashboard, click on applications, and then select restore on the MySQL card. Click on a recent restore point, which we know we've just created, and then select the exported restore point. This is stored in the object storage system instead of as a non-durable snapshot on the storage system. In this case, we will select the default application name option to restore it in place, restore as MySQL, leave all the other selections as is, click on restore and confirm. Okay, so we jump over here, we jump on applications, we see our MySQL that says now it's compliant because we've got a scheduled policy to run against that. And you can see here that we've got this one option. If we go in here, this is obviously that export that we've made to object storage. And this is where we can restore back to where it needs to be. Again, we could run this in the kubectl as a command using the, the native APIs within Kubernetes. And we've got a few other options here as to what we want or what we could do, what we need to recover. For the purpose of the demo, let's just hit restore and bring everything back as fast as we possibly can. So here's that restore, let's drill down into this again. And you can start to see that things are gonna to start to get restored back into our, our application, into our namespace. And then finally down here, you can see, so once that's finished, we're gonna take a copy of this, basically the, the command that we ran before to verify that K10 demo as a database was not there. And we're going to confirm that 
as if by magic, it is now back because we've shown you how to restore that. Okay, so things should be starting to look starting to look good from a I think it was called my sequel everything's back up so let's run that same command and you can see that our database k10 demo is back the same command that we ran here that indicated that there was no no database so in theory we should be good to check that Phew, that took a long time. And all of that to get to this next stage, which is a case of confirming your email that you've completed the task along with me. And now we can all get that, that free ebook that will allow us to learn even more. But just remember that that lab's there, it's available, please, use that with this quick start kubernetes guide there's a lot of different commands in there that will enable you to understand a bit more about namespaces pods etc and be able to just play around really so and with that we submit we check that we did that correctly and how much did you enjoy it obviously big smiley faces and finish and with that if there's any questions then please put it in the comments down below and I'll be happy to help thank you